Underground mining is one thing, but what about mining the world deep below the seas, which cover over 70% of the Earth's surface? I'm Metal Bulletin's Andrea Hotter, and I've taken a trip to Jamaica to find out where the deep sea mining is viable, or if we're out of our depth. Kingston, Jamaica is the headquarters of the International Seabed Authority, set up in 1994 following the entry into force of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The ISA held its 19th session in Kingston, Jamaica in July. The organisation has approved licences for exploration in three main regions so far, the clarion Clipperton Fracture Zone, the Indian Ocean, and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But how did seabed exploration come about? Around 150 years ago, a research vessel travelling the oceans of the world picked up samples from the bottom of the sea. The little rocks were later found to contain copper, cobalt, nickel and manganese, with grades of metal that were substantially higher than land-based deposits. During the Law of the Sea Convention, it was decided that all areas beyond the limits of national jurisdiction which contained these minerals would be administered by an international governmental organisation called the International Seabed Authority. But it's not as easy as simply dishing out licences. ISA Secretary General Neil Dunton told me that there are many challenges, including environmental concerns, a lack of standardisation, and unproven technology. Of all the years that we've been doing this work, only 800 tons of polymetallic nodules have been brought up successfully. We have no idea whether this actually works. But there's still huge optimism surrounding the prospects for future mining from the seabed. At the present time, we have contractors for all three of the metal types. The larger number is for polymetallic nodules. But in total, we have 17 approved contracts, um, 14 are operational. I still have to sign three more with three countries that, whose applications were approved. With regard to when any mining will take place, there are two ways I look at it. We have an exploration code. There is no mining code. A mining code would define how much the contractor paid to the authority. The contractor can then do his own arithmetic and decide that, okay, I have to pay so much, this is how much I'll bring up. And it's worth investing in some equipment, testing it, and seeing whether it actually works. Um, I, for one, am extremely excited. When I started doing this thing many, many years ago, I thought it was somebody's pipe dream. I, actually, I thought they were all mad. Why and how would anybody go all the way 6,000 meters down in search of potatoes that contain these metals. You could find them on land. The interest in the subject matter, uh, the way we see people coming in for contracts, and the work. The work is assisting us to put the dollar value on some of these contract areas. The work that we get from annual reports of the contractors inform us that these things are worth about so much. And the more work we do, the more standardization there is, this will become much clearer, and one would know basically what one had gone out there for. Thank you. So there you have it. Don't rule out seabed mining anytime soon. I'm Andrea Hotter, and I'm reporting from Kingston, Jamaica.